Hi, it's Maya here with my top 10 books of 2017, or rather I think I should say top 12 because I am cheating a bit. But first I want to say hi to all my new subscribers. I gained a bunch of subscribers because of a couple of Twitter threads and a shout out from Winx from Winx and Ink. So thanks Winx. I think this top 10 video is perfect for you new watchers to see if you agree with my taste in books. I hope you do stick around and let's move on to the list. These aren't in any strict set in stone order, except for the top two, which are my five star reads of the year. But first I want to talk about Red as Blood and White as Bone by Theodora Goss. This is a novelette that is available at tour.com and I will link it in the description so you can go and read it. And I will just read what tour.com says that this is about, because it is well said. A dark fantasy about a kitchen girl obsessed with fairy tales who, upon discovering a ragged woman outside the castle during a storm, takes her in, certain she's a princess in disguise. And this just pressed all my goth and fairy tale buttons. I also really enjoyed Elizabeth Hand's Wilding Hall, which is a horror novella about this band who is being interviewed about this summer in the 70s that they spent in the countryside at Wilding Hall, and one of their singers went missing then. I love the atmosphere of this book. It is so slow and quietly spooky. And I also really like this bird motif that is running throughout the book. And I like that it doesn't explain things too much. On the next place, I put two novellas from the same author, The Sorcerer of the Wild Deeps and A Taste of Honey by Kai Ashanta Wilson. These both take place in the same world, which is this mix of science fiction and fantasy that I really enjoyed. And they both have bisexual or gay male protagonists. In this I got drawn in by the language and the world and the unchronological way of telling a story. And out of the two I think I preferred the story in A Taste of Honey a bit more. Next I have Of Sorrow and Such by Angela Slater, which is another novella. I read a lot of novellas in 2017, I really got into reading them in 2017. And that's why I'm showing you most of them from my tablet, because most of them I read as ebooks or then I borrowed some from the library. This one that I own on my Kindle and it is a fantasy novella. This tells about Mistress Gideon, who is the village witch, but times are not good for witches or other supernatural beings. A shapeshifter woman is captured and the women of the village really have to be careful around the men of God that have arrived to the village. I like the focus of the story of women's lives under the power of men, but the main reason I love this novella was the great main character. The Book of Phoenix by Nadia Okorafor was an eminently readable story about Phoenix told in her own words. And this is set in the future and it is about a woman who is a scientific experiment who breaks free. And I really got into her tale of vengeance. Next I have two science fiction books set in the same world and they are Planetfall and After Atlas by Emma Newman. Planetfall tells the story of a human colony on an alien planet and the secrets surrounding its founding. And Off the Atlas is more of a cyberpunk tale of a murder investigation on Earth. Both of these deal very well with issues of mental health and the main characters are really interesting. Borderline by Michelle Baker is a fast-paced and gripping urban fantasy story set in LA with a great three-dimensional main character. This tells of Millie who, after a failed suicide attempt, is hired into the Arcadia project that governs the travel between Earth and Fairy. And Millie gets the job of fighting this missing noble fae. This is just a rollicking and fun tale with a one-of-a-kind protagonist and the book just flies by. Now we are nearing the top and I would give my number three spot to The Convergence of Fairy Tales by Octavia Cade and this is a novella that is a horror fairy tale retelling. It mixes together Sleeping Beauty, The Snow Queen, Snow White, Rapunzel and The Frog Princess into one character in this bloody and beautifully written tale. It opens with the ending of one of the original Sleeping Beauties where the princess wakes up from her long sleep having just given birth and she reacts with horror and disgust to her situation. Now we are in the top two and these are both on the same level for me. They are both five star reads from 2017. First I'm going to mention The Stone Sky by N.K. Jemisin. This is the epic conclusion of the Broken Earth trilogy. This is an apocalyptic fantasy tale about a woman trying to survive the end of the world while also looking for her daughter. This was the right way for the story to end and this whole trilogy is a powerful read set in such a well-crafted world with great flawed characters that aren't perfect people but feel all the more real because of that. And my other five star read was Jackalope Wives and Other Stories by T. Kingfisher, which is the pen name of Ursula Werner. This is a collection of mostly fairy tale retellings or fairy tale and folk tale inspired stories, but also some other short stories as well as some poems. This is such quality. Werner's writing style just works so well for me. It's so matter of fact and down to earth 
while dealing with such fantastical events and creatures. Grandma Harkin, who is the main character in the title story, Chakalope Wives, as well as in The Tomato Thief, is a great older woman character and one of my favorite characters from 2017. So those were my top 10 or 12 favorite books of 2017. I'm also going to briefly talk about my favorite comics, rereads and some short stories. First, let's go through comics. I gave one comic five stars this year and that was the Princess Jellyfish 2 in 1 Omnibus Volume 4 by Akiko Higashimura. And this is a contemporary comic. Some of my other new favorite comics are the Girl from the Other Side by Nagabe. I read three volumes. I also read three volumes of Jonesy by Sam Humphries and Caitlin Ross Boyle, which was hilarious. And I also really liked Marvel's Short Arc of Vision, volumes one and two by Tom King and Gabriel Hernandez Balta. And I also really enjoyed Monstrous Volume 2 by Marjorie Liu and Sana Takeda. Now, out of rereads, so my five star reread of 2017 was The Fool's Fate by Robin Hobb. I also reread Binzi by Nedi Okorafor. Taika Talvi or Moominland Midwinter by Tuve Jansson, Murder on the Orient Express by Agatha Christie, and I also reread a couple of comics. I reread the Akira series, Akira volumes 1 to 12 by Katsuhiro Otomo, and I also reread The Wicked and the Divine volumes 1 to 4 in preparation for reading volume 5. Those are by Kieran Gillen and Jane McKelvey. In 2017, I also read a bunch of short stories, which I'm really bad at reading, but now I wanted to nominate something for the 2017 Hugo, so I read a bunch of stuff that had come out in 2016, and out of those, these three have stuck in my mind. I will leave a link to all of them down below, since they are available to read online, and they were Lullaby for a Lost World by Aliette de Bodar, which is a fairy tale fantasy story, uh, Laws of Night and Silk by Seth Dickinson, which is a high fantasy story, and also Natural Skin by Alisa Wong, which is a horror short story. And all of these were quite dark, actually. <laughs> I wanted to give out an award for my favorite new to me author I read in 2017, but this proved to be quite difficult, since I really enjoyed the one thing that I read from three of these authors. I read one thing from Octavia Cade, Theodora Goss and Angela Slater, and I enjoyed all of them, and I will definitely be reading more from all of them. So those were all of my 2017 favorites. Now I still need to post my November and December wrap-ups, and then I can put the 2017 reading year behind me. But that's all from me for now. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I will see you in my next one. Bye!